What's up, animation fans? Mason here with a super special animation book review. <laughs> it's The Illusion of Life by Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnston. And we've gotten a few requests for this one, and I'm more than happy to do this flip through and review because The Illusion of Life is quite possibly the most essential book on classical animation ever. I'm going to try to do my, my best to do this book justice in the short amount of time that I have. So why is this book so great? First, look at the authors. You, can, you got uh, Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnston, who are probably the best known of Disney's Nine Old Men. Uh, Thomas and Johnston were there all throughout Disney's golden era of animation, a time when Walt Disney Animation produced some of its most beloved animated classics of all time. And during this golden era, Disney managed to actually elevate animated film from just prolonged cartoons to an art form. The book recounts the early years of Disney, and that's a story that is essential for every student of animation to internalize. But that's not quite the purpose of the book. What the illusion of life really accomplishes is an extremely detailed explanation on what makes classical Disney animation so magical. And at the core of Disney's animation mastery, and I'm talking about the actual art of hand-drawn animation, are the 12 principles of animation, which were conceived and developed by Disney's Nine Old Men. For the uninitiated, the 12 principles of animation are guidelines for creating animation that is convincing, uh, no matter the visual style. If you've ever wondered why the character animation for Frozen was just as beautiful as the animation for Sleeping Beauty, it's all about mastering these 12 principles. And even if you're a more avant-garde or experimental animator, you still need to know these rules so that you can break them. Each of the principles of animations are, are explained in the illusion of life, and the level of detail is excellent. If you've ever wondered what makes an animated character appealing or how follow through or overlapping action works, it's all here in the book. Furthermore, the authors use examples from their experience working as animators for Disney during the golden era. And that's where the book shines the most in all the visual examples it provides. The illusion of life is absolutely packed with images from concept art to background paintings to photographs showing what it was like to work at the Disney studio back in the day. Not to mention lots and lots and lots of animation samples from the Disney archives in sequence showing how the artists brought these drawings to life. And I know it's not the same as a frame by frame breakdown on like video, but you're really not going to see so many scans of original drawings from anim Disney animated films unless you go to the Disney archives yourself. Every square inch of the book is filled with some sort of image or annotation, and the fact that the book itself is more than 570 pages long shows you just how much content there is. The book also describes the original Disney animation pipeline, if you want to know, and explains how Disney pulled off technical accomplishments such as cell painting and syncing animation with a soundtrack, things that we definitely take for granted in the digital age. Uh, you may be wondering how all of this is relevant today when CG animation has pretty much taken over the industry. Well, the tools for creating animation may be different, but the principles of animation such as timing, uh, exaggeration, anticipation, and even squash and stretch are still being used today. It doesn't matter if you're a diehard fan of hand-drawn animation or a future CG animator, the illusion of life should be considered a required reading for any student of animation. If you're a Disney fan, you'll be thrilled to find an in-depth appendix in the back of the book. And it's got original character profiles and kind of like style manuals for characters like Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, Goofy, and more. And while the illusion of life puts due emphasis on the visual art form of hand-drawn animation, there's also a significant portion of the book that deals with story. One of Disney's big challenges when he produced Snow White and the Seven Dwarves was crafting a story that made the difference between a long cartoon and an epic fairy tale. So you can read about how Disney treated story in the book as well. I've never read a more comprehensive book on the art of classical animation. All right, I hope that was enough to get you interested in this book. Uh, we'll provide a link so that you can find The Illusion of Life on Amazon. And don't forget, with every purchase you make through our Amazon affiliate link, you're also helping the rotoscopers at the same time. The Illusion of Life is fantastic, bottom line. I wish I'd read it years ago when I took my first animation class. And like I said before, if you're an animation student, you should consider The Illusion of Life as required reading. I mean, just get the book already. You'll thank me later. Until next time, this is Mason on the Rotoscopers YouTube. 
This has been a Rotoscopers video review. Be sure to like this video to show your Rotoscopers love and also subscribe to the Rotoscopers YouTube so that you never miss out on news, reviews, and more from the world of animation. For even more animation awesomeness, check out rotoscopers.com, the go-to place for animation addicts like you.